Hey, what's up everyone? This is Joe. Welcome to another How To Origami tutorial. And in this video, I'm doing a remake on how to fold the origami flexagon. So in my original video, I got a lot of positive feedback, but I also got a decent amount of negative feedback, enough so that I decided that it was worth doing a remake. The, the primary complaints were, one, that the lines I drew for the diamond part were clear enough, and I agree. When I drew those lines, I did not realize that the exposure was set a little too high, so to contrast that, I will be using a thin point sharpie, fine point sharpie, um, instead of a pencil so that you will definitely be able to see it. Also, uh, there were some complaints about just how to do th the whole diamond part in general. So I'm going to break it down and slow it up on all the parts that there was conf some confusion uh, and hopefully this will yield a much more understandable tutorial. So I'm going to start using printer paper. No, it does not have to be printer paper. You can use any paper you want. All that matters is that you use a piece of paper that is a 1 by 2 ratio. And by 1 by 2 ratio, I mean a piece of paper that is twice as long on one side than it is on another. So another way you can get this is by taking a square sheet of paper, like an origami piece of paper, folding it in half, all right? and then cutting on that line, right? Because when you do that, you're dividing it up into basically two squares where one side, pretend like we just cut that, one side is now twice as long as one of the others. So that's, that's all you need is a piece of paper that's one by two ratio. You can get it however you like, but you can use a square sheet of paper folded and then cut in half. Otherwise, if you want a bigger flexagon like me, you're going to use a sheet of printer paper or something else. And the way we're going to get a 1 by 2 sheet of paper from this is by doing the following steps. So we're going to start by folding in half lengthwise. All right, once you've done that, unfold. And then we're going to fold like an airplane, we're going to fold these edges up to that center crease. And just a reminder, if I'm going too fast, I apologize. Just go ahead and press the pause button at any time and catch up. You can also rewind. And if you want to play around with the speed buttons, there's a gear icon down in the bottom right corner, I believe, where you can adjust the speeds for your playback. All right, so now that we've gotten this shape, we know that we basically, we essentially have two squares, one here and one here, right? So this all right here, the strip is excess paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold along this edge right here. So basically I'm going to flip it over and pull this back as far as it'll go until I get to where the points, you know, where it could start folding over like this. I want to fold to this edge. Again, if you used um, origami paper and just folded that in half and then cut and that is also fine you don't need to be doing any of these steps right now we're just trying to get to the one by two sheet of paper all right so now you'll see when I unfold that we've created uh, these two squares and we've created this line right here to divide what we need and what we want to get rid of so once we've uh, once we've defined this area that we want to get rid of just gonna reverse that fold once, and then I'm going to tear along that line. You can tear or cut whichever you want. Um, I will link my video in the description about how to do an accurate uh, tear like I just did. All right, so now again, we don't need this. We're gonna put that off to the side and recycle that. So this is our one by two ratio paper. 
basically two squares connected. This is what we want, and from now on we're going to be doing the actual flexagon. Okay, so now we're going to do the first step for the actual flexagon. So we're going to fold to start from the top edge to the bottom edge. So basically folding it lengthwise. Some people call it hot dog style, whatever you want. Just we're going to fold it long edge to long edge. Take your time to make sure that your creases are lined up. Since this is a moving model, everything has to be very well dimensioned. I know I said in the last in the last video that this was a relatively easy tutorial and if you've done origami in the past yes this is actually a relatively easy or simple tutorial and you can see that um, some people in the comments disagree with that statement and this is most likely because um, if you haven't had a lot of experience with origami this will be very difficult so keep that in mind as you're doing this and know that you just gotta keep trying and maybe get more practice and maybe do some other things to get more experience and come back to this. Whatever you need to do, this is possible and it is real. I'm not being fake here, this is an actual thing. All right, so we folded this lengthwise fold right here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold these two edges, both bottom and top, into that center crease. All right, now we have this long little strip right here. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're going to be folding a grid. So I'm gonna flip this over. Um, I'm going to start by folding it and then I will outline those folds so you can see exactly what I'm doing and where those folds went. So we're gonna start by folding the short edge to the short edge, dividing it, dividing it in half. There should already be a crease here so we're just reinforcing that. Okay, now we're going to fold in those same edges to the center crease right here. Okay, just like that, and then the other side. All right, unfold. Now we're going to fold these short edges into that crease we just made. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, and now to get these last two creases in here, we're going to fold this one to the second to the last crease over here. So not this one, but the one right here, that one. Rotate it and do the same. Okay, so now we have a two by eight grid, and I'm just gonna take a second to um, mark all of those lines. Okay, so I just highlighted all of the uh, folds we made in the last step, and you'll see we do have this two by eight grid going across, all squares, all right? So now is the confusing part where we start to fold in the diamond. So the way I said to uh, imagine it is folding like there's a slope of two and negative two. So we have this grid right here, imagine it like graph paper, and we're gonna start by folding a line from here to here, all right? I'm trying to draw as straight as I can, sorry. Use a straight edge if you're going to copy me. If you want to wait, I will do all the folds first and then I'll go back and I'll do the rest of the lines drawn out. So we're going to fold a line like this from here to here, okay? And then we're going to move on 
to basically every other vertex. So we're gonna fold once there. Then we're gonna go from here down like that and so on all the way down to the bottom of the paper okay then we're gonna flip it or rotate it and do the exact same thing so that way we're going in opposite so that we're going in opposite directions um, actually that might not work but either way we're going in a slope of negative two and then we're gonna add in slopes going the opposite direction to make diamonds so I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll go ahead and mark those all in for you to show you uh, the pattern. All right, so I'm pausing it halfway through just to make sure that this is exceptionally clear, but this is what a complete pattern should look like after folding in one, one of the directions. So this one, um, depending on your perspective, would be a slope of negative two, right? Over one, down two and it's every other one, so it's not like it's going through every single point. So this is what it should look like, okay? You can copy that or conceptualize it however you want. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing, but going in the opposite direction. All right, so this is the completed pattern. You can see the diamonds are very prominent here. This, when you look at it from this perspective, has the slope, as I was talking about, of negative two and positive two, right? So this right here is what you're looking for. If you want, go ahead and pause it and copy this onto your paper before you fold. Um, or if you've already done your folding, then we're just gonna go ahead and move on to the actual assembly. So for this part, I'm gonna start by taking the two short ends together and comparing them. Um, most of the time your folds won't be perfect so you'll notice that one of the short ends is slightly larger than the other and in my case this one is slightly larger so that means I'm gonna be sticking this side into this side and you'll see what I mean by that in a minute but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you that all of this these two these two uh, or I guess it's two by two segment right here is not going to be used. This two by two segment will be stuck entirely into this two by two segment over here. So I'm gonna make sure that my, um, my flaps are on the inside when I do this. So I'm folding this around. And again, this one, see, this is the blacked out side, the smaller side. This one is going to be stuck into inside of these flaps right here, like this. All right, and I'm just going to stick a whole thing inside like that, okay? And you'll see we have this triangle ring kind of thing. Make sure that this is all the way inside, by the way. It should be very, uh, very tight, okay? So we have this kind of ring like that. You'll notice that according to your pattern, some of these, some of these, um, Verti uh, these vertical lines will come to a point at the top and some of them will not they'll just have a straight lines every other one has a point every other one has a line like that so what we're gonna do is we're going to take these ones that do not have a point these um, flat ones these flat edges at the top and we're going to press those in along the fold so you can see a mountain folding along those lines we just made like that okay we're gonna do that on all three of those lines. All right, once you've done that, we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Okay, so now that we've done that on both sides, you're gonna see that we kind of have this like series of three uh, hexagon looking things. 
uh, and we have these points. So next, and this is pretty much the last step, we're going to take these points, um, I like to do two at a time, so we're looking at this, hex this uh, hexagon thing right here. We're going to take these points and we're going to push them back like this, okay? So these diagonal folds right here, those are going to be mountain folded. All right, so we're just pinching it back like that. And then holding those back, go to another side and do the same thing. All right, be careful not to crunch your paper. It'll probably happen, but try to minimize as much as you can. All right, I'm holding them both back and then I'm gonna do the last side. Just a pinch back like that. All right. So this is the finished hexagon shape, right? The flexagon. So now what we're gonna do to start the movement is we're just going to take these corners and push in. We can also pry, pry out from the bottom, whichever you wanna do. We're just gonna slowly, slowly rotate this and allow the, allow the folds to kind of set in place. All right, so there's one movement. That looks good. We're gonna go for another one. All right, and another one, and then we can get faster as we go. It might try and bunch up and uh, crumple. Like on this this side, you see it kind of flexes like this. You just gotta press these in and keep it moving until those folds all set in better. All right, there we go. We're getting some good movement going here. And this just moves on for infinity. Just like that. All right. This isn't my best one because I took a lot of extra time trying to draw out the folds rather than focus on the quality of the folds, but it still works very well and is very entertaining. So you can see that this is a real object. Um, I believe this is called a flexagon, or you would refer to this as a flexagon because the word flexagon refers to the whole family of flexing hexa hexagonal shapes. Um, a lot of you in the comments said it's a hexagon, which it, it may, very well may be, but according to the definitions I've seen, uh, in order for it to be a hexagon, it has to be um, something that is reduced to a hexagon, which is a two-dimensional shape. And even though this is based on a hexagon, hence flexagon, um, even though it's based on a hexagon, it is not a two-dimensional shape and it can't be reduced to a two-dimensional hexagon. So I think that it's just safer to classify this as a flexagon and then let you guys argue in the comment section about whether it's a hexagon or a flexagon. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I really hope that it makes more sense and that uh, if you failed at the last one or you didn't do as well as you liked, this makes it much clearer and you are able to do it. So feel free to give this video a like. Um, also, you can check me out on Facebook Instagram, Twitter, and if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so. So I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next tutorial.